Okay, hello YouTubes. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick meditation guide that I've found out over the last year or two. Well, my whole life really, but anyway. Okay, so let's say um, number one, pre preparation. So there's no point sitting down to meditate if you're in a fidgety mood and stuff like that. So <clears throat> aim to sort of gradually relax yourself towards a time when you can meditate. And also uh, don't have eaten much, um, especially not sugary stuff. Um, natural is best, obviously natural and raw. And um, don't have had any coffee because coffee will last for ages and you'll be fidgety also, I would avoid, I've been avoiding black tea now for over a year and I think that helps. Well, not, not quite a year, but... So black tea as well. Try not to have had any of that. Um, so, you'll then be in a stage, and also if you can avoid chemicals, uh, toothpaste, avoid fluoride for as long as possible. I don't even know what it's like now to have fluoride, but... Anyway, so... In a relaxed state as possible. Sit down in a comfortable chair and don't be tired. If you're tired you're more likely just nearly fall asleep. Um, so sit down comfortably and you can cross your legs, you can have them open, you can hold your hands like this. Uh, this it does seem an effect of that but uh, to be honest the best meditations I've had my hands have been just down on my lap, sometimes together like that, although lately I just do the most comfortable thing, which is to do that. And um, interestingly, so anyway, I'll go on to that. Um, so yeah, and the key is then, is don't move. Um, maybe you can move your head a bit without it affecting you too much. I mean, you can if you have to get up and turn something off and put some music on or have no music on. Um, noises, lights, I, I don't like to do it in the dark, um, but noises and lights, just think of them as they're just all energies. So if your neighbour starts mowing the lawn, it's just sound energy and um, don't, don't worry about it because you need to remain in a happy, loving state. And I think cannabis is a very good tool, as you've probably heard before, so if you've got some cannabis, have a smoke. To be honest, um, meditating when I've not been smoking cannabis, I'm, I've had moments, you know, like, um, I haven't sort of planned to meditate, but sometimes just sitting down waiting for something then I would use the opportunity. And actually that that's pretty good. So yes, off cannabis, I have done it. And it's just impromptu moments. If I've got to wait 50 minutes, 10 minutes or whatever, you know, I could do that. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's good not to move. So you sit there and you don't move. Close your eyes. What well, I was going to mention about the moving of the head, so if at any point you get towards feeling God, <clears throat> God is only a, a soul and exists only on soul dimension. Well, the universe is in God anyway, but so once you start to feel God, your soul will be feeling God and your body. It's kind of not out of it. So in a sense, this is a humbling way to sit with your head down because it kind of recognises that the body is not you. So your soul is you. So the body humbles, if you like, to the soul. I have found that it's quite different. With your head up like this, is quite different effects than say about here 
but you might not find that. This is what I found. And so you sit there and allow the thoughts to come into your head. So if there's a thought that says, why are you doing this? You could be doing other things, obviously, then you're not in a very restful state and you're not going to get anywhere. What happens to me after about maybe five minutes sitting still is, you know, I would have had some thoughts, perhaps some pictures as well, start imagining with pictures instead of kind of thinking with thoughts. And then suddenly a feeling will come. So, not bragging, but if you like, probably my feelings now are quite advanced you know so it might start with the with the, with something smaller you know if if you haven't done this too much um i mean the first thing i say i would ever have that i ever felt like to be a, an external thing from me was a like a hand on my head and i believe that was god well that's the first thing in my memory of, you know, since grown up being an adult. A lot of things happen when you're a kid and that's really good as well. Um, so it depends what you, what you think about is the key to what you will feel. Uh, and, you know, where your interests are, where your desires are, what is your desire to know, what is it you want to know, tap into that. And um, going back into childhood memories is can be a real feeling trigger because we were feeling more uh, as we were younger and if you haven't remembered something in your past for a long time or if you you haven't gone back beyond a certain age for a long time boy when it hits you um you know you'll get you'll get everything you'll get like it was like you were back there <laughs> you get the whole lot <clears throat> and then you remember so and then you know sometimes you remember memories so you remember things before now that's also quite interesting is the 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 memories you've never completely forgotten the ones that have kept coming up um look at those really really look at them and think why does this memory keep coming up? So you do all this in meditation. You just sit in there doing nothing. And um, yeah, I mean, once you get into that, once you get into it, you, you're not going to need any instructions anymore. Um, you're also going to find that you don't need as much sort of outside. Uh, input into understanding things you will start to believe and know for sure that you can access anything you want to know can be accessed right so i'm not going to go too much into um feeling soul injuries because i think i've done plenty of videos on that before and AJ Miller has covered it extensively so there really is not much need for me to add to that except which I'll say again which I have said in previous videos but if you start to feel your face contort in any way so like this or anything where your head won't move it would just it would just happen involuntary that's brilliant. That is your facade or facades. That's the face you put on when you didn't want to feel the emotion underneath. So allow it. And honestly, at that point, you can, you should be able to sense a connection to God. Because God would certainly want you to be doing this. And you should get that feeling that God is wanting me to do this now. 
And then, um, w while you, you know, they will, there will be an image or, or a thought, something that triggered that, right? And it would be, you know, probably something negative about yourself. And so you just have to feel it. And 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 the amazing thing is, the beautiful thing is, is once you've felt this, once you've allowed everything to happen and the feelings later. You n never have to feel those again, unless you choose to do the things again which caused them in the first place, but you're very unlikely to. If you've gone through it fully, and go through it with feeling God, and love is always got to be there. When you when you get through it, I'm losing my place, <laughs> just trying to add all these things so you don't forget anything, but it just gets too complicated, doesn't it? No, so my point was, is it's fixed forever, right? So you've got soul injury, your soul is eternal. That is going to last forever if you don't deal with it. And so it's so amazing that when you do deal with it, you know it's going to last forever. Okay? And I don't know if I could say I'm living proof yet. Um... Probably people think I'm probably crazy, but I believe that I have progressed over the last year, if you want to have a look, since I've been doing these. And I managed to, managed to get through to, you know, at the beginning I did really well, I did quite a lot, but, and I do believe they were the bigger ones. And I've gone through the year and, and, and been able to do quite a few that seem smaller ones. Um, or it's possible that I just wasn't facing them fully, but no, I don't think. I think I was. I'm pretty sure I was. I'm. I'm. I've been prepared to face anything, because I've. I faced fears, fears when I'm meditating, when I think I'm spinning around, when I think I'm upside down, when all oh, this electric stuff's coming out. It's not pleasant. I've had quite a lot of that, quite a lot of stuff like that. I felt swathes of sadness, sadness I didn't want to feel back when I was in junior one at school and that was a dark year and I hardly remembered anything in that year and it was because I had this sadness and, th and this thing about doing it with God <laughs> accelerates it it means that you sat there for half an hour feeling it instead of what perhaps should have been without God um, a full three months of feeling it so, worth, worth knowing God, right? Worth using God, absolutely. You know, you get to this realisation that you need God. We need God. It's nothing shameful to admit that. Humans have tried every possible way of living and things without it working very well. And we will come to the conclusion that we need God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Our souls are basically still on the umbilical cord. We haven't got to the stage where we can detach yet. We are in the very, very beginning of an eternal life. Don't worry at the moment about how it started and when will it end. You know, except you're in the infancy, there's so much to learn. Then we can ask those questions. I have asked those questions, I've mentioned them in previous videos. But it's a bit vague, and but you know, it's also you know taking on truths. You see, that's the other thing. You know, if you don't believe the truth, you're not going to get anywhere. Believe Jesus has come back to spread the truth, and that is why he came back. So go and get the truth. Try it. Allow yourself to try it. You know, don't just don't watch his latest videos because in those he's just, you know, a bit pissed off with the people that have been trying to come into his seminars for years and years and they're still not they're still blocked. So he's a bit you know he's gone really down into the detail and everything else. So watch ones like Secrets of the Universe and stuff like that. 
because it makes a big difference. For me, when I was meditating before or going into stuff, um, you know, there was a ceiling there that I couldn't get past without the truth. God knows how long it would have taken me if Jesus hadn't come back with the truth. Don't know if I would have managed it in this lifetime, to be honest. So, very grateful. And it will help you too. Um, so, yes. So once you get into the feelings, so allow those facades, allow them and relax your body. Just keep your body relaxed the whole time and in fact slow your breathing because sometimes when you feel something it excites you, it's like wow. And you might find yourself start breathing really hard, which you know I have quite a number of occasions and um I don't know if I put this on YouTube before, but the 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 best meditation session I which I feel like I made my breakthrough. I I, because I, what I was doing, meditating sometimes, you know, and then I stopped feeling my arms and legs. And basically, they're not there. And any pain from the sitting and stuff like that, endure it. If you're comfortable when you begin sitting down, now I have quite an uncomfortable chair. It's got this knot in it. Yeah, I get used to it. So, feel any pain that comes your way. It's just the key is just to allow. It's if you like unhindered. What's that word I used before? Fettered, unfettered. The imagination unfettered. And it's quite hard to do. It's just allow things. Allow nature. Allow it. Allow the soul. So yeah, hopefully um, that that might help um, with meditation. And um, just trying to think now if there's anything I haven't finished saying about what the feelings like. Yeah, the sadness. So it's unpleasant to feel it, but as soon as you've started allowing it, it moves. You know it's not going to last forever. You know it's. It's just kind of going, you, and you also know that God is again giving you, um, giving you uh, like a <laughs> assurance, you know. So you got God on your side, and then afterwards, you know, have the most pleasant, most oh, blissful. It just it does get better. I mean, it's you know, it's the road. To success, the soul is eternal. Money, <laughs> money lasts this long, and it's going to be absolutely useless. So don't strive for that. You know, we know we must have a bit, and you know you've got time in the day to do things. So it's a problem. Do a bit of work to get enough money. God. God's fixing everything for you. God deals with everybody individually, whether you like or not. And feel God. Play the game. Imagine God. I'm sure this is a game played with all of us in the womb. <laughs> we, we imagine what God is. That's a really good one. So there's loads of things you can think about. That, you know, What do you want to understand? What do you want to know about? And think about it and then let go and as soon as you start to feel just just keep feeling it's that uh, you know small beginnings greater ends and um, it does start off small and uh, you'll need gaps but um, yeah it's good all right that's enough Ciao.